Okay, everyone, welcome back to another episode of Nailing Flicks um, with myself, Eleanor, Gerd, yes. and Fabrice. Fabrice. Um, today we're going to we're doing a theme show, and we're looking at um, child stars to adult stars. Indeed. 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 <laughs> yeah, you, Part you, one. you get the drift. Um, and so the films we're going to look at today are uh, from 1987, uh, The Empire of the Sun, starring. Christian Bale. Ooh. And then I'm going to look at the 1993 offering uh, What's Eating Gilbert Grape with Leonardo DiCaprio and... Uh, then Leon or The Professional from 1994 with Natalie Portman. Mm. Okay, so let's get into it. <laughs> Empire of the Sun, the movie, not the Australian band of the same name, from 1987 marks the second ever feature film performance of one Christian Bale at 12 years of age. Directed by Steven Spielberg, Empire of the Sun is a tale of World War II set in Shanghai from 1941 to 1945 and an apparently semi-autobiographical tale from author J.G. Ballard. It tells the tale of Jamie Jim Graham, J.G. anyone? a keen and budding aviator, and the separation from his aristocratic British parents when the conflict causes an evacuation of the city. Jim is eventually captured by the Japanese along with Basie, John Malkovich, an American GI who comes to be a Fagan-like figure to Jim's artful dodger in Su Chow, a prisoner of war camp. Jumping ahead to towards the end of the war, Jim has become a very adept networker in the camp, trading goods as a go-between even with the Japanese officers. Now that Jim has an established life in the midst of war, and we the audience are aware of the turn of world events at this time, what will become of Jim as the Japanese forces succumb to the Allies? An all-star crew worked on Empire of the Sun behind the scenes. Tom Stoppard was on screenplay duties. John Williams returns as Spielberg's maestro composer. Alan Davio does some sterling work as director of photography. Editor Michael Kahn looks after the editing and when the search for Jamie was underway, line readings were undertaken with a bloke by the name of Liam Neeson. Empire of the Sun was almost made by David Lean and Spielberg eventually took on the project as he felt an affinity for Lean's previous epics. Whilst it is not quite in the realm of some of those masterpieces, it is not an, it is not an entire failure, more a movie of great moments without itself being a great movie but led by an undeniably brilliant performance by Christian Bale. What do you think, Empire of the Sun? <clears throat> yeah, I agree with that um, assessment. Like, the film as a whole, um, I mean, it's a, it's a stellar film. I, I really, I always love the film. Um, and Christian Bale's amazing, you know, at, for such a young actor. Yeah, he's crazy. He's, he's crazy good. Ridiculous, ridiculous, yeah, yeah. And, he, and you know, really unfettered. You know, I find yeah. like children, children, or child actors, you know, all at that, that age. Mm. There's no kind of layering on of anything, you know. Then you, you look at him in something like Rain of Fire, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like a little bit. No, I'd rather not. <laughs> no, no. It's all about Matthew McConaughey. Right? <laughs> um, yeah, like just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful performance, and to see people like Miranda Richardson in it as well. You know, it's really. Um, yeah, it's an interesting mix of cast, actually. It is. It's a very. It seems to be kind of like, in a way, a very watered down war film, if that makes sense. Well, like, okay, this is a point that I was yeah. going to get into because mm. it it seems when I was watching it because I hadn't seen it when it came out, I only saw it just last week. Um, I, it felt to me as though the war was a distant thing. Yeah. And 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 it was very it treated very much in a distant fashion. 
and you look at his, you know, Spielberg's Go at Schindler's List, and it's obviously much more personal. And the war's right there in your face, you know. Yeah. But this this one felt a bit distant, so and I think that detracted a little bit. But I mean, that is the story. Well, yeah, and it is. It is looking at you know an examination of Jim and mm -hmm. how he kind of copes um, throughout that period in his life. It was heartbreaking, though. I mean, you know, I have to say, as a, I don't know if you guys look as a woman, and I don't have any children, mm -hmm. but that scene, um, and this is not a spoiler, but the scene where he is separated from his mother mm. in that kind of wash of people, I find horrible to watch. Like, it's just, I, it is, it's just absolutely heartbreaking. And him yeah. is screaming, you know, mummy, mummy, like that. Mm. Like, I just, every time I watch that, I just break down. Like, mm. it, it would just, I could not imagine what would be going through someone's head in that moment. And the kind of hope of going back home and then, you know, coming in to get him. Um, yeah, particularly because of the consequences of that. I mean, like a mother, you know, being separated from her child is bad enough, but like the fact that they plunged into a war as well, yeah, you know, it's just, yeah, oh. absolutely. But gut wrenching, and you know, the conclusion of the film is really quite satisfying, and beautiful, and you know, and some of the shots in the film, like that, you know, there's a <clears throat> once again, sorry, it's a spoiler, but the shots where Jim's on the roof or Christian Bale's a young child, and they're the flybys of yeah. the airplanes. So amazing yes. to watch, and apparently what they did was they had Christian Bale up there, and um, Steve, uh, Steven Spielberg said to him, "Really react, you know, like you have to get really sort of pumped up. To you you love the airplanes, so, and so they could only do the shot once because it's a mammoth shot. Yeah. And so he did it, and apparently he was yeah he was kind of hanging out there and not really getting into it as much as he should have been. Yeah, he wasn't doing too much, and they could only do this shot once. Like they did it because um, it was so massive, and then Steven Spielberg in the end had to get him to jump around and like cut and edit it back in mm. because apparently he was so Christian Bale was so because he's so young was so stoked with all the special effects oh, okay. God. <laughs> yeah. watching it and not acting yeah. <laughs> so oh well you know I thought that was good but that's a beautiful shot it is yeah. it's, 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 it's quite scene. a few I mean like I said I mean the moments are there's some you know some sort of almost painted to um, Spielberg moments mm -hmm. in the film you know uh, I won't give them away, but uh, you can actually you can actually see it happening. You go, oh, there's a Spielberg moment. Yeah, <laughs> you know? absolutely. Uh, and there's like it's the little things that sort of carry on from one scene at the start of the film to you know a little scene at the other end of the film. So, and and the, actually the use of the hymn at the book well, that book ends the film is quite good as well. It's a Welsh hymn, and I think Steven Spielberg chose it because Christian Bale is Welsh, and mm -hmm. they had oh, to cross yeah. it or something like that. But yeah, it's really quite beautiful. It's quite beautiful. Mm -hmm. What did you think? Of um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Uh, no, I mean, I thought it was. I, you know, obviously, I'm going to agree with you about Christian Bale. He's incredible, and just his level of confidence was something that really struck me as well. Like completely unselfconscious acting. Oh yeah. yeah. Which um, you know, after having seen stuff like The Last Airbender that we were reviewed recently, uh, you know, like that's how it's not done. This is how it's done. <laughs> Fail. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know, I, watching this, I think I've kind of realised that maybe I'm not such a Steven Spielberg guy though, like I, he does, there are some bits in this that are a, a little bit heavy handed, I think in terms of, of sentimentality, which I think he does occasionally, and, and the John yeah. Williams score yeah. is really something that that I find probably over the top at times. It's like you could see in this film, like he'd done The Colour Purple, you know, by this obviously, it was, but this is one of his early films and you could see him kind of shaping up to become this real commercial director mm. in a way, you know, yeah. like to give us things in the future like Jurassic Park. Yeah. Yeah, I know what I know what you mean. Like there's no edge, real edge to him in a way. Yeah, but I, oh, sorry. No, I was gonna say, this was, it's an interesting film in, in the stages of uh, Spielberg's career because I mean he was trying to break out of being the, the showman you know the entertainer mm -hmm. and uh, he was trying to become the artist yeah and, yeah um, so yeah I mean, and in that respect he's interesting he yeah. doesn't quite make it no he doesn't like it's almost yeah, like a practice no. film it's like a warm-up film <laughs> yeah. but I mean having said that though I think the ending is just like incredible in terms of how you know it just hits it hits it perfectly, like that kind of not being excessively sentimental. No, it's no, just, no. it's beautiful. Like it really, really got to me. You know? mm. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree completely. I actually was a little bit flat. My reaction was a little bit flat to that. I didn't, couldn't quite 
yeah, we'll figure out how I felt about that, to be honest. But I, I do agree that it was much better than choosing the centre. A really centre pious centre kind of running at each other across a field or Slow something. You know? yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, so. Uh, but uh, yeah, John Malkovich was good too. Yeah, he was great. And was, Ben Stiller. Sorry, yeah, I just said, oh, that's right. Don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. And apparently he came up with the idea for Tropic, the, Tropic, oh my God, Tropic, Tropic Thunder. Thunder. Yeah. From you know when he was making this film, yeah. <laughs> right? That's, that's, that's strange. Yeah, because he <laughs> exactly. had, he had friends at the time. The, the story goes that he had friends who were making Platoon and were making Hamburger Hill, and they were talking about like the boot camps that they did, oh, yeah. um, like you know in order to do to get character, etc. Yeah. yeah, and so he thought, and Ben still remembers thinking to himself that you know training to be. Um, an act, a soldier actor was nothing like real war. <laughs> so, and that's where he kind of had this kernel of an idea for Tropic Thunder. Yeah. Anyway, so I cut you off. I did not at all. I, I don't really have much more to say unless you guys do. Um, let's hammer it up. I'm going to go with uh, 6 out of 10 for me. Yeah, I'm going to give it 7. Uh, 6. <laughs> Jim! Get off the roof! Jim! <laughs>